Cartier was founded in Paris in 1847 by master jeweler Louis-François Cartier. His son Alfred and grandsons Louis, Pierre and Jacques, each successively at the head of the Maison, pursued their lofty ambitions for the business. In 1899, Cartier opened its premises on Rue de la Paix, the prestigious cosmopolitan hub of a capital city which attracted famous figures from all over the world. The three brothers set out to build an empire based in Paris with its sights firmly set on abroad. In 1904, Pierre and Louis traveled to Russia, a country which fascinated them and inspired an array of creations. Before long, the imperial family and Russian aristocracy were enchanted. The English aristocracy flocked to the new Quartier Boutique, which opened on New Bond Street in 1909. A few years later, the youngest brother Jacques took the reins of Quartier's British branch. He cultivated ties with figures that included some of the most remarkable Indian princes. Enchanted by Cartier's expertise and unique style, the Maharajas entrusted Cartier with dazzling gemstones to be reset in stunning pieces of jewelry in the modern style. Thus began Cartier's inspiring relationship with India, where the Maison opened an office in 1911. Pierre Cartier, Louis's younger brother, moved to America to run the New York branch in 1909. A clientele consisting of rich industrialists from the New World and the finance sector was joined by the first stars of Broadway and of silent movies, and a few decades later, by Hollywood celebrities. Extraordinary figures who discovered the spirit of excellence that has always driven the Maison. As the house's signature animal, the panther has always reigned supreme over Cartier designs. The elegant feline was used for the first time on a wristwatch, with the setting of the gems recreating the animal's fur. The panther sprung to life with the arrival of Jeanne Toussaint, who worked closely alongside Louis Cartier and was nicknamed La Panthère. Jeanne made her mark on Cartier design with her feminine elegance, independence, and free-thinking temperament. Cartier was the first jeweler to explore femininity through the metaphor of the panther. The motif soon became a key part of many Cartier designs. The bounding creature adorned powder boxes, cigarette cases, and vanity cases to later appear on bracelets, necklaces, brooches, and other sumptuous jewelry. The panther became the object of all desires. A three-dimensional panther featured on a brooch was acquired by the Duchess of Windsor in 1948. The Duchess commissioned a second brooch the following year, featuring a platinum panther perched atop a cabochon sapphire weighing over 152 carats. She completed her collection with a fully articulated panther bracelet studded with onyx. Every rendering is a strikingly lifelike sculpture, a timeless, fearless emblem, the panther still stands as an icon of the House of Cartier. Since the end of the 19th century, Cartier has created an extravagant, unique, and precious menagerie. This fantastical menagerie defines and reflects the Maison Cartier's know-how. For the jeweler, this expression of nature represents both a technical and aesthetic challenge, as in these birds caught in full flight. An astounding array of fauna inspired by all the continents. Wild beasts are borrowed from Africa, sacred animals from Egypt, a host of dragons and chimeras from Asia. In 1968, the jeweler created for the actress Maria Félix a snake necklace made up of 2,473 diamonds mounted on platinum. A few years later, the actress also acquired a pair of snake earrings and ordered an entirely articulated crocodile necklace made up of 1,023 fancy yellow diamonds and 1,060 emeralds. Panthers, tigers and other felines, still today the jeweler creates ever more sumptuous and majestic creatures a staggeringly beautiful menagerie. In 
In the 19th century, the floral motif made its appearance in the Cartier story. This theme was enhanced by the garland style, marrying the sparkle of diamonds with the lightness of platinum to fashion the most precious compositions. Exquisite petals brought to life by the Maison's jewelers. Cartier reinterprets nature thanks to its unique style and expertise. Dazzling diamond petals to be worn as bracelets, brooches or necklaces proved irresistible to the most elite clients. Princess Margaret of England fell in love with a diamond brooch mounted on platinum, while Queen Elizabeth of England entrusted Cartier with setting a 23.60 carat diamond, the Williamson diamond, in an Edelweiss brooch. As the years went on, the Cartier flowers were crafted in gold, articulated and offset the most precious of stones to perfection. Just like this absolutely sublime orchidée brooch in amethyst and aquamarines with its surrealist inspiration, the orchid soon became queen in the jeweler's precious garden and appears in a number of stunning interpretations. The Cartier Garden blooms with dazzling flowers, exquisite metaphors of feminine beauty. Jacques Cartier made his first journey through India in 1911. Fascinated by the richness of Indian civilization and its jewelry culture, he brought back not only spectacular precious stones from his travels, but also a wealth of inspiring, creative ideas. The Cartier brothers drew on the diversity of traditional Indian precious stones and figurative motifs to create a unique fusion of East and West. At the turn of the 1920s, the Indian princes entrusted Cartier, the jeweler to kings, with their amazing collection of unmounted stones. Cartier subsequently crafted pieces of jewelry for the Maharaja of Patiala and his son in Paris, as well as the Maharaja of Nawanagar in London. The jeweler sought inspiration from the pieces worn in traditional Indian parades and infused them with a modern twist. Enamored with the splendor of Indian jewelry, Cartier alone dared to experiment with unprecedented color combinations. Reds, blues, and greens with splashes of sparkling white diamonds paired perfectly with stones carved with floral, fruit, or palmette motifs. In Paris, London, and New York, clients coveted these opulent, multicolored pieces. The Hindu necklace, commissioned in 1936 by the extravagant Daisy Fellows, is a perfect example. This flamboyant, colorful, and flexible necklace features rubies, emeralds, sapphires, and diamonds mounted on platinum. The style, known as Tutti Frutti, would become one of Cartier's most prominent signatures. India. Its jewelry tradition and its dazzling stones inspired Cartier to explore new heights of creativity, powerful style, and unraveled expertise. Today, more than ever, Cartier's jewelry creations continue to be inspired by the mysteries of India. Cartier, jeweler to kings, king of jewelers. This quotation from the Prince of Wales, the future King Edward VII, attests to Cartier's ties with royal families and aristocracy worldwide from the early 20th century onwards. Cartier was awarded 15 royal patents between 1904 and 1939, becoming official supplier to the most powerful dynasties, which most notably ordered precious tiaras from the jeweler. In 1909, at the behest of Grand Duchess Vladimir, Maria Pavlovna of Russia, Cartier created a tiara adorned with sapphires and diamonds. A foliate scroll tiara created in 1910 was acquired by Elizabeth, Queen of the Belgians, in 1912 while that of Queen Victoria Eugenia of Spain was made in 1920. In 1926, Jagajit Singh, Maharaja of Kapurthala, entrusted Cartier with the creation of a head ornament consisting of 19 exceptional emeralds, including an incredibly rare stone of 117.40 carats. 
Cartier has been a privileged witness of royal and princely love stories, such as that of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, or that of Grace Kelly and Prince Rainier III of Monaco, who sealed their union with a Cartier ring adorned with a 10.47 carat emerald cut diamond. For her wedding to Prince William in London on April 29, 2011, Catherine Middleton, future Duchess of Cambridge, wore a Cartier tiara. Created in 1936 for the Duchess of York and future Queen Elizabeth, the precious tiara was also worn by Princess Margaret in 1955. This headpiece with scroll motifs creates a halo of light, which is given it the name Halo Tiara. These rings, tiaras, and sets of jewelry are testament to an extraordinary dialogue between the jeweler and these historic personalities.